tonight uh, very briefly about a subject that has been on my heart to give constantly for a while now. You see, the warning, be not dismayed with God during these trying times. Yeah. One thing we can agree on, this is a, tr a trying time. Yes. And uh, as we go down here, uh, we'll get ready to read what we have written. Come on, let's read it out loud. There's just a few of us read it together. Amen. It is highly important in times like these, times of severe trials and temptation, pestilence of pandemic proportion, fear of becoming the next victim. And not the statistics. Amen. During the times of all types of virus and disease, that we don't charge God's foolishness and this day in his holiness. Be careful not to bring God's wrath needlessly upon ourselves. Amen, amen. Out of all we do, we want to make sure that we don't bring God's wrath upon us because of doing something that's uncalled for, uh, un unkind, unjustness towards God himself. Uh, this is a trying time, but uh, we, as we look through the lesson, we're going to get a chance to see some of God's word being proved. Amen. The scripture directly says, y'all ready for the next first, verse? Come first on, read it. 1 Peter 4.12. 1 Peter 4.12. It says what? Beloved. Love. Think it's not strange concerning the power of trials, which is a trial you. Mm-hmm. It's a strange thing happened unto you. It should not be strange because today is not the first to see such a trial. Amen. Not today. Amen. 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 Trial is everywhere. Yes. And one thing we know, it is a fiery trial. Yes. It's not just a, a little run-of-the-mill trial. It is a fiery trial. And sometimes it's so fiery that it feels like you're burning up from it. Amen. But it says this. It is a fact that the whole world is concerned about the coronavirus and its effects on our health and well-being. Come on. Truly, of all people, of all walks of life, are wondering about their survival. Yeah, aren't they? Amen. People of all walks everywhere are wondering about Survive. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, it goes on to say what? Should they contract the virus? That's what we're worried about. If we contract the virus, what about our survival rate? Amen. So people everywhere are concerned about dying lately. Mm -hmm. However, if one wants to check the world statistics, come on. you probably would be surprised to learn just how many people have died since the coronavirus seeds the people of this world. They were not caught by corona. People that died weren't even concerned about corona. All right. They didn't know a thing about it, but they're dead. Mm -hmm. Since corona has hit. Amen. And so, so don't worry about that being a new thing. Amen. God has, has allowed something to happen here. Now, read uh, the next segment. It says, Hebrews 9.27. And it says what? And it is important not to be once to die. But after this, it doesn't. Amen. 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 Hebrews 9 27. It's appointed. Yeah. In other words, it's guaranteed. Yes. It's guaranteed that, that, that we're going to die. And it's guaranteed that we're going to have to meet the judgment. Yes. All right. Come on, read the, read the next verse. Real carefully. This virus is brought for most of us a protection to reality that it should never have been. Amen. We've been we've been thinking about this and, and, and come and go. We, we sure get off. Yes. Well, everybody got to die from something. We go, everybody got to die when we just sure get off mm -hmm. without considering about it. Go read the rest of it. The young, the young and, old. and old. The rich and the poor have the issues the same appointment with death. Amen. With the what, with death. We're gonna need you to read loud because this is we just got a few of us here. Rich and the poor, young and the old, we got the same appointment, amen? amen. All of us got to meet death and judgment. Now, it didn't say, let's read what, what God's word does say. The judgment of the Lord is reserved for who? For mankind. Uh huh. Not for men and women. Death 
It's got to come before we die. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, it's got to come when we die. Uh, but but judgment going to have to come after we die. Mm -hmm. So it's saying that pointed unto man wants to die, but after that, the judgment. And, it's, and death is one thing we can be sure of. And it's on the way. Yes, Forthcoming, it is on its way. Now, it goes on to say, God cannot be and will not be judged as unfair or biased because of coronavirus. And it is the effect upon the individuals. Now, wait a minute, it's what it's saying. You can't look at God in, in, in a funny way. You can't think about God doing something unfair and think God will do so for one that he won't do for the other. Uh, I don't care who the individual may be. Why? No respect to person. No so read the rest of it. This is not the first place. This is not the first place. It's not, is it? It's not. We, we, we've heard about, listen, the AIDS virus mm -hmm. yeah. is killing folk just like uh, uh, coronavirus. Mm -hmm. yes. Ebola mm -hmm. is killing people. Mm -hmm. Everywhere we look, different strains of the flu. We have all been subject to a virus that was, that was killing people. It's nothing new. Come on, we're going we're gonna to read a little history on it. Most, Most people, people naturally charm all to God. To God. Anybody agree with that? Most people think about God mm -hmm. and think about God in in a, in a form of a bully. All right. You know, we use a little bit of nothing. Mm -hmm. God just doing this because He can do it. Yeah. And so and every every bad thing happening in the world, we want to put it on God and say that God don't really love us. He said he did, but you can see he don't. That's what people's mindsets are. Amen. Now, after we, we come to get through saying all of that about what God is and what he's not, come on and read the rest of it. The sins of this world and the church have become so brazen before the face of God. Yes. 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 Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Sin everywhere. I look what notice what he said. Sins of this world and the church. And the have become so brazen before the face of God. It's, we're doing it in and everything in church. Everything is going on and we are, are taking part in it. Uh, we're not saying anything. It's going on and God is not pleased with it. He has never been pleased with it. All right. Now let's what he say. Early on in the scripture. Come on. It is made plain that God punishes even his own people. His own people. Yes. Yeah. His own words, words are that. Come on, read it. Ezekiel 18, That's what the word says. The word says that. He said, They're all mine. Mm -hmm. But the soul that sinned sin. sin. shall die. die. And that's his word. Instead of us crying, mm -hmm. complaining. Complain. That's what we'd better be worried about. Amen. Falling into the category unrepentant sinners. What we're doing. We, we, we're looking at God and, and we're all dried up in a corner and, and, and saying different things about God, complaining, scared of everything, and, and, and putting unfair judgments against God. But we better make sure, one thing, sure and very sure, that we are hooked up with Jesus. Yes, sir. Now it says in Exodus 32nd chapter and the 34th verse. Amen. And when he said, I do not do come, mm -hmm. I'm letting you by this time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm not going to forget it. All 
And when I have to come again, I'm going to visit your sin, what you have done. My mom used to do that all the time. She might let me buy this time. But then when, when she came back, she goes, well, do you remember when I told you not to do so-and-so, and you did it anyway, and I told you to go here and you wouldn't go there? I'm going to put all that on you, and next thing you know, it's too late. Look what he says in, in Exodus 32 and 35. Who? The Lord. The Lord plagued. Mm -hmm. What we what we in the middle of now? Plague. We're in the middle of a plague right now. But well, this right here says, and the Lord plague. plagued the people. Why? Because they did not Excuse me, that, that's a typo. I don't know how in the world they got there. <laughs> because they did what? They made a calf. Now this is what it says. Is they made a calf. But then look what else it says at the end. Because which Aaron made. Aaron. Now you know Aaron was the one that fashioned that cow. Right. But it said the people made the cow, didn't it? Mm -hmm. It was because of their, 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 their biased judgments and opinion. Mm -hmm. It said their evilness, that they lived within them. Talking about, let us, uh, God, we don't know where this man Moses right. is, but let us make us a calf, a God, they said, yeah. to, uh, to lead us back to Egypt. They, they, they went against God and talked about what they wanted to do and against God's holy judgment. God brought them out, had mercy upon them, but then still they wanted a calf, a God, a God anything, a bull. Like they wanted anything to take them back. So God said, I'll I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to plague the people. Amen. Come on, read. We're going to get a little plain here. We should be making sure that we don't fall into the category of those that the scriptures spoke of and born. Second Chronicles 7, chapter 13 verse. If, if I shut up heaven, mm -hmm. then there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. What, what's among the people today? Pestilence. Everywhere we look, something is wrong. If I sin, if I send it, he said. Not if it just happens. Amen. If I send it among the people. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on to say what? It's my, it's my people. Uh huh. Read that again. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven uh -huh. and will forgive their sins. And will heal their land. Read on. Regardless to whatever the kings may be. Yeah. Whether the wrath of the storm is home. Anybody recall those words from a, a famous song? Famous song. Whether the wrath of the storm tossed sea. Hurricanes on every coastline. Jamaica got hurricanes. California got them. New York's got them. Look, look what it says. Oh, storm tall sea. Or demons. Or demons. Game by. Everywhere. Or what? Whatever it be. Whatever it be. Whatever it be. The song was written many, many years ago. And over, over half a century. But today is just as new as it was back then. It's just as real today as it was back then. And it goes on to say... God, above all things, is still able to only speak, peace be still. That's all he got to do. It said, peace, peace be still. And do what? And heal our land of whatever it is. I don't care what's going on in the land. If one word from God, and he's speaking, it's going to be done. Amen. We're worried about uh, what's happening in the world. Uh, we got something else to worry about. Come on, come on, look a little bit more. Food, food for thought. I believe that by far the most common reason of both spiritual rationale and reason for this pandemic and of all types is that the world is in a fallen condition Amen. and is of need to return to God. That's where it is. Yeah. We need to return to God and it's plain to see. Amen. Everywhere you look, you, you're in trouble. You can't go anywhere, you can't go to the stores. Right. Folk are robbing you at the stores. Yeah, right. 
every kind of disease is everywhere. You, you can't be safe anywhere. Everywhere you look because folks don't love God. Because they don't love God, they don't love you. It's everything that's going on. We got to turn back to God and tell God we are sorry. Amen. That's what the scriptures say. We got to turn from our wicked way. So we got to seek his faith. And all these things mean repent. And listen, this is what it says. This world is not a perfect place by any means. Come on, come on, read it. There is no paradise on earth. Man was forced out of paradise to go out of meeting because of sin. As I wrote in a previous lesson, more decay and spiritual decay are fundamental operating principles. In this present world, Come on. Sickness, disease, natural disasters, accidents, this coronavirus epidemic, and other tragedies are natural consequences of a fallen world. Amen. A natural consequence. People are wondering what's going on. God should be doing be people like this. When God's going to stop? When he's going to tell it to, to stop? Yes. Well, now, you think he can tell them to stop? You, you know he's God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're charging him foolishly. We got to be careful not to charge God foolishly. Look what he say. Everything that's happening is from natural consequences of a fallen world of sin. Anybody agree with me on that? Sin is the cause of it all. Amen. Come on, read. Until then, we will suffer the inevitable consequences of living in this fallen world. That's what's going to be in this living in this fallen world. Now. Listen, God has set an example over in, in the scripture of St. Luke about uh, this thing happening. See, because our folk are going around talking about uh, why we got to suffer for, for what the folks are doing. It always has been that way. It always has been that way. Listen, the people in the time of Egypt, all the people were there. God brought a pestilence there. Only the ones he chose were, were able to bypass it. But all the rest of them were there. They died. They suffered because of the plague and the pestilence. Uh, the, the children died because God's word said it would happen. Now, as we start to think about that, everybody that was over there that suffered had not done wrong. They may not have, they may have been ignorant to God, to being the God of the world. But they hadn't done anything that they knew of wrong. There were pe always were people who would not cheat you, would not lie to you. And some of them were like that because it, it's just the way society is. But they all had to suffer the same consequences. Amen. Amen. So look what it says on the last page. Repent or perish. This means us. Come on, come on, read. Luke 13, Say that again. Luke 13, 1. Repent or perish. This means us. Look what it says. This is an example right here. 13, 1 says, There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. He was. He was making reference to a bunch of people that some say were Samaritans and, and the rest of them were Galileans. They were Jewish people who who uh, the, the who was ruling that land at, at that time. Pilate and Herod. They were having a sacrifice because uh, pagans always did sacrifice. But listen, they took the people, some of the people, they just killed them because they could. They probably resisted Pilate and Herod and they just killed them. Because it was a thing that they did. It's always been that way. I remember a lot of times on the on the, the, the Tarzan show, uh, the, the, the natives would take the people, the American people, who were over there in their land and sacrifice them. Right. Put them on, on splits of wood and split them wide open. Run them down a, a big long blade. That was a thing that people said that they always did sacrifice. They, they brought blood. Now look what it say. In verse number two says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Suppose ye that these Galileans were 
sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. Amen. Now listen what he said. They came to him and told him about Pilate had killed some of the Jews. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered them and said, listen, you reckon uh, the ones that they killed were sinners above, they had done more sin than the Galilee, than some of the other Galileans had done? You think they were better than them? Mm -hmm. Read on down. I tell you today. No, the answer was no. They were not worse than the people. Mm -hmm. They were not worse. But listen to what he said. But, but except you repent. Except who? You. He said you. Uh -huh. If you don't repent, you shall likewise perish. Amen. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is this. There's going to be a perishing because of the lack of repentance. That's going to, we know that. Now, but it's going to be some who were not guilty of doing anything because they were in the times of the perishing. Because God got the final say so. Yeah, right. He always lets that go like that. Listen, a whole lot of things I've had to suffer on the jobs that I know I did right, uh -huh. right. but somebody else messed up. Uh -huh. All of us uh -huh. had to pay for it because that's just the way it is in life. You, a lot of times you have not done anything wrong, uh, but you got to pay a consequence. Water bills are high, electric bills are high, and, and it's not because of what they read, because a lot of times they don't even read them. But the water bills and the gas bills are high because somebody else used so much. They're going to spread it out. So this is what he's saying. Now and look what else he's saying. He's talking about a time at the pool of, at the pool of Bethesda, in the pool of Siloam. I mean, it's saying. And so they went out there, and they were baptizing on... on and getting down in that pool to get healed. Now we call it sometimes the pool of Bethesda over here. Mm -hmm. They were down there waiting on the spirit to move to stir the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, something happened. A tower fell down. Look what it says. There's 18 of them. Read it. For well, the Lord was 18, upon whose tower Salome fell. Uh huh. And slew them. Yeah. Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? Now listen, he said, you think they were the worst people in Jerusalem mm -hmm. for this pool, for this uh, a, a tower to fall upon? Mm -hmm. And don't even put it in the, in the wrong place at the right time or whatever way you want to put it. Mm -hmm. It fell on them because it was their time. Amen. Now, a thing I want to say to us, he said, no, same thing going to happen to you. Except you repent, you shall perish too. Yes. Now listen, I'm thinking about this. We are going to have to make sure that we are right with God. Because coronavirus causes a perishing. It, it doesn't pick out the folks that's going to uh, fall upon. You can be the priest. If corona wants you, it's going to get you. And you can do all you can do. And I keep telling you, it's not in the CDC. It's not in social distancing. It's in the hands of God. Amen. The only thing we got to do is worry about being ready. Right. We got to be ready when that time comes. Amen. We don't know when, but we do know one thing. Yes. It's forthcoming. Yes. Don't forget that. Uh, listen, God wants us to be uh, truthful and, and, and full of love in judging things. We got to look at God as God as God. We got to make sure we don't say uh, ignorant things. Outside the word of God. Yes, charging God foolishly. Yes. That's what we're talking about tonight. Right. Charging God foolishly. Look, being mad with God. We know that you love whoever it is. Mm -hmm. We understand that God does better than we, than we can. Mm -hmm. He knows who is our family, who we hadn't seen. And, and we get, didn't get a chance to see them before they died. But this coronavirus is happening to a world that is full of sin. Amen. We don't know how God's going to rid this world of sin. Yes, sir. We don't know what God is doing. All the thing we got to do is be ready. Yeah. There's a, a, a song out that says, I, I pray we all be ready for his return. And I want to know, I want to say this. I know this. I want to be ready. Amen. We got to work on it every day to be ready when Jesus comes. Because we don't know when. Could be in the middle of the night. Could yes. be in the middle of life. Yes, Lord. Yeah. We got to be ready. Yes, 
when God calls us, we got to answer. Amen. Yes. We, want, we want it all to be to our good. Yes. We don't want to have God pull us to the side, so to say. Mm -hmm. And say, well, you, you can't go in. Mm -hmm. Your life is not been pleasing. We already know our lives are not pleasing yes. when they're not pleasing. Yes. We want to make sure that we don't charge God. And then I, I say, do not be dismayed with God. You can't be upset all the time. Quit praying. Quit going to church. Quit doing everything because you are dismayed with God because he took so-and-so back home. God is the one that gives life. And it's his life to give. He can take it. Whenever he gets ready. He's already warned us. Be ye also ready. Because you know not when the Son of Man shall come. He said, be ready. Our church can't be in vain. We can't have come out here all these times for no reason at all. For God to say, uh, uh, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I want to hear God say, well done. I want God to look at me as a servant. Went in the rain and stone. Went when I told you to go. Did what I told you to do. Say what I want you to say. Uh -huh. I want him to say, well done. Well done. Well done. Be not dismayed. Yeah. God, during these trying times, mm -hmm. I pray that you have gotten something out of the lesson. Amen. God has spoken to your heart because of what we read. Amen. Yes. We going to ask God to bless this word tonight. Yes. Go out and help those who are standing in need right now.